There are two finals places up for grabs at the second stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup here in Shanghai. And now it's time to find out who will claim them on Recurve Sunday. We're in a pretty unique location in the park here in Pudong. The temperature has been climbing all day, but the wind is providing some comfort for the, both the athletes and the spectators here in Shanghai. Brilliant park here, and here is our schedule for this afternoon's recurve. And I'm Karen Bashir. Joining me is uh, Mackenzie Brown from the USA. Mackenzie, looking at, like a great lineup. Yeah, I think it's going to be really awesome shooting today. Hopefully, the temperature keeps going down just a little bit with that wind. But uh, I think these uh, matches are going to be heating up pretty soon. Yeah, the mysterious angels, uh, a symbol of protection and favor in the Lu Jiazhu Park. Coming up now, though, it's time for the bronze medal match in the recurve mixed team. And who will the conditions favor here over this 70 meter range? It is a unique location, shooting over the water. It's the two losing semi-finalists up first, and a bit of a surprise at the top end of the order with Turkey beating Korea 6-2. Chinese Taipei took out Great Britain 5-1, and that means it's Korea versus Great Britain for the bronze medal here in Shanghai. Well, we've been waiting for this one with anticipation. The athletes are ready to come out. Let's introduce them here to the people in Shanghai. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field. The recurrent mixed team from the battle match. Ladies and gentlemen, of Korea here in the bronze medal match. We're used to seeing them in the gold medal matches, but it's uh, Choi Mi Su and Lee Wu Siuk who shot a 13.68 earlier on in the week. World ranked number one. Your salute from Lee Wu Siuk. It was a 13.24 for Great Britain in the ranking round. They line up with Brani Pittman and Tom Hall. number two. Representing Great Britain. Brittany Pittman. Smiles all round from uh, the British duo. They're up for the fight, but they have got a big fight on their hands against this game Korean team. Well, the athletes are preparing. Looks like the range is clear. Great Britain on target number two, Sarah Smith in the coaching box. She's uh, got some international pedigree. Yeah, I think uh, it'll be a help for the British team for, to have her in the box. She's a very calm person and good spirit to be in the, the coaching box. So Korea to shoot first in the bronze medal match in the mixed team event in Shanghai. Shooting over 70 meters, a nine is a good start and a good sighter. Just putting that one to the right. So they've corrected uh, the direction. Now it's about the height, but Great Britain to shoot their first two hours. Bryony Pittman up first. Nice, nice shot. Nice, great shot. Let's go, Tom. Same as before, doing the process. Oh, Great Britain with the mini advantage at the halfway stage. Four arrows per team per set. Two set points up for grabs. You have a higher score at the end of the set. It looks like uh, Chomi Soon is trying to find the middle right now. I think maybe just battling with wind right now. 
1 2 가감하게 그렇지 Park Jason, the coach there, happy with that one. But there is a big opportunity for Great Britain to strike early here. Keep it strong. Keep it moving. Great timing. Nice shot. Ten. Yes, Bryony. Let's go, Tom. Another ten for Great Britain. Same again. Exactly the Seven to tie shot. up. Anything more, and they get the first two set points. Seven, eight, Good nine. Enough. Just about enough. Pressure on. Great Britain scoring 37 to 36 and claiming the first two set points. Really important to get a good start against the world number one team, Korea. And Great Britain have done just that. Two tens in the first set for them. One from each of the pairings and uh, well the eight was just about enough great job great job there from Sarah Smith and it really was a great job yeah they shot they shot really well and um, I think maybe getting a little bit of the nerves out there from Tom with that eight but uh, I think they're gonna come back with a good start for the second end same again, Sarah Smith was uh, her final words. Are we going to see the same again from Korea or are we going to start hitting that 10 ring? Different approach from the teams, but it's all about what works for you. What's up? Well, we start with a 10 for Korea in the second set. And it's been a feature of these Korean teams taking one set to find their way and then just getting better and better through the matches here in Shanghai. Lee Woo Suk still trying to find the medal right now. Same again, was what Sarah Smith said. Nice. Nice, nice. nice. Great shot. Let's go, Tom. Great deal of encouragement from her. Same again, just do your shot. Keep it moving. Bit of a longer hold and I'm just pulling that one out to the right hand side. I've definitely said this before, but I think timing is so crucial in these finals matches. I think it's important to trust your process and keep it quick, um, not only for yourself, but for your teammates as well. Another 10. Choi soon proving that timing is everything. Well, there we have it. 39. This one is done. Korea have found the middle. You've got this. Great Britain will use these two arrows just to find their way back to the centre. But at the end of this, it will nice, be two nice apiece. Nine, right. Nine. 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 Okay, Tom, do any shot. Nice, 10. It was a much more confident shot. One thing you could hear was uh, Bryony was giving him a little bit of advice on the wind. She felt more wind pushing her to the right, so I think Tom adjusted really nice for that last 10. Well, three tens from the Koreans uh, and a nine gives him a 39 out of a possible 40. But it was the seven from Great Britain following uh, this ten from Choi Mi Sun. Great start from them. But a second one to the right for Pittman and, uh, sorry, not Pittman, Hall. And two tens to finish off for Korea. 
They found the middle. This uh, target number one, Team Korea, does 39 points. Good start from Great Britain, but immediate fight back from Korea. Range is clear, ready to shoot. The score is tied up, so Korea will shoot first in this third set. 2 2 at the halfway stage. Dead center shot. Pressure applied again, only dropping a single point career. Pittman also shooting very well, but just a bit high for a 10. Long hold again from Tom Hall. Yes, still manages a nine. Yeah, pulled it back in from the right hand side. Two tens from Korea will put the third set out of reach from Great Britain. That's another ten from Choi Mi Soon. I think she may have afforded us a little smile then as well. So they drop one point, but uh, Great Britain need two tens here to share the set points. Anything less, and Korea will take a 4-2 lead. Nice, nice timing. Ten, yes, right. There's one. Let's see if Tom can follow suit. Same again, you've got this. Keep it working. Deep breath. Just outside by the looks of things. Three nines and a ten for Great Britain. A 37 out of 40, not bad at all, but not good enough when Korea shoot a 38. Well, Choi Mi Soon shooting brilliantly here. Two tens from her. Starting to relax a little bit. But Korea shooting so well here. Here are all of their arrows from the match so far. A little bit spread out are the groups here, but uh, I mean, it, it just has to be good enough, right? This is set system. You don't necessarily have to have a perfect score every single end. It just has to be one point higher than your opponent. Well, Great Britain started well, but Korea have fought back. We go into the fourth set, Great Britain trailing by two, will shoot first and they have to put down a marker here of a high score to put the Koreans under some kind of pressure. Bryony Pittman up to the shooting line. Nice, great timing. Ten, yes, Good start from her. Tom Hall needs to take another deep breath and go through his process. Great stuff from Great Britain. That's just what they needed. The hold was a, a little longer than he wanted. That's a good way to put a little bit of pressure on this Korean team right now and potentially give you a chance at some set points. Well, the door is open. An eight from Choi Mi Soon, who shot so well through this match. 
不需要退。Lovely X there. I think that's the best part about shooting team rounds is that you've got a teammate that can help you out when you shoot a bad shot. And I think the the Koreans are having a a little bit of fun and, and joking with each other when mistakes happen. Nice, nice timing. Nice, 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 nice shot. Nice shot. Oh, that's a nine, a ten from Tom Hall will put this out of reach from Korea and tie the scores up. That one into the eight. So now a perfect score from Korea and the bronze medal is theirs. Well, a ten. They, all they need now is a nine because a nine will draw things level and they'll share the set points. On the 10-9 line, and Korea take it. 6-2, 38 place 37 in the fourth set. And the pair of them, well, I have to say Choi Mi Sun was probably shooting the better of the two throughout. But in the end, it was Lee Wu Suk, the male part of the duo that carried them over the line. Good start from Great Britain, but they just couldn't keep up the pace. Korea take the bronze here in Shanghai. Well, the start that Great Britain needed just couldn't be maintained, and the Koreans were too strong. Again, starting nice and steady, but then just getting better and better. They've taken bronze in the mixed team event here in Shanghai. Well, Park Chae Soon, the coach there, had his birthday yesterday and he's continuing the celebrations here in Shanghai on Recurve Sunday. Here are the highlights and a great start from Great Britain. They got the first two set points, and uh, that's all you could ask for against a, a Norway's game Korean team. But Tom Hall just holding on a few arrows too long, and Korea just got better throughout the match. Choi Mi Soon carrying things through right the way to the end, and Lee Woo Shuk took over, scoring a 10 to finish things off and taking the match. 6-2. Fist bumps all round in the Korean camp, along with their smiles. They'll be on the podium a little bit later on. Coming up now, it's time for gold in the mixed team at recurve here in Shanghai. And we look down that range. It's an awfully long way down to the target. So we saw Korea being knocked out in the semi-finals and uh, it was the Turkish team who did the job there, 6-2. They will be up against Chinese Taipei who beat Great Britain in the semi-finals, 5-1. They're already waiting in the wings. So let's welcome them out here onto the range in Shanghai. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field the recurrent meeting gold medal match. 女士们、先生们，反击不过的话，把你金牌决赛，欢迎运动员入场。一号吧，Antalya number one representing Turkey. Well, for two athletes who've uh, been competing together for a very long time, they're not sure which way to go around there. But it's Yasmin Anagosh and Mete Gashos on target one for Turkey. 二号吧。their competitors. We're expecting a tight one here, and Chinese Taipei are looking uh, very strong here. Two. 
representing Chinese Taipei. Tanya Ting on the left. Tanya Ting. Tang Chi Chun. Tang Chi Chun. Formidable lineup for Chinese Taipei. But as I said, I think Ashosh and Yasmin Anagosh have been shooting together for a while since they were both eight years old and made their Olympic debuts together at Rio 2016 when they were both just 16 years old. Tanya Ting, well, she's returning from a recent hand injury. So maybe Turkey will see an opportunity to strike early here and put the pressure on Chinese Taipei. Fist pumps with the Turkish coach, Goktug Ergin. It's time to go for gold here. Start. The best start. Good way to answer with the ten. High quality. Oh, she did look happy, but that's another ten. And uh, like you say, Mackenzie, perfect score so far. Good answer from Turkey. Good shooting from uh, Tanya Ting. It does not seem like that hand injury is bothering her too much. So an opportunity here for Turkey. Well, that means the set has gone away from them and uh, a little bit of a grimace there, unsurprisingly, from Anagosh. <laughs> but uh, Mete Gajosh puts it in the ten. The set's gone away from them, Chinese Taipei. Stealing it in a way as uh, Anagos dropped to a seven on the third arrow. Well, they shot really well. But they left the door open at two tens from a Chinese Taipei, but uh, this seven meant the set was too far away. And a 37 was not enough for Turkey against Chinese Taipei's 39 out of 40. A good start from both, but a dropped seven from Anagosh means Chinese Taipei steal the first set. So we switch around now, Turkey trailing will lead out the line for the second set. They need to put down a high score to put the pressure on Chinese Taipei. We're both just drifting off to the right and the wind sock there showing us that the wind is blowing a little bit across the field of play but fairly consistent Mackenzie. Yeah, not a lot of wind to be pushing arrows super far. But both teams are sitting there on the right side of the target.
Three. Two. Well, on the 9 10 ring, means the archer gets the higher score. You can see that second arrow from Turkey subject to a measure, but at the moment, that's not going to mean too much because Chinese Taipei are two points ahead. Yeah, I would, I would be adjusting my sight or just aiming off a little bit more. Um, there's not a lot of wind, so I would be adjusting my sight. Good response there from Gazos. Gets a 10, but uh, a big opportunity here for Chinese Taipei to go four set points to zero up. Well, talk about uh, giving your partner a comfortable shot. Six to tie the set points. Anything more? And it is. Means Chinese Taipei go four set points to zero up. And again, it's just a couple of drop shots from Turkey. Uh, and again, Chinese Taipei hitting the ten a couple of times. Tang Chi Chun here, right on the line, and then Tanya Ting, well, straight into the X. Consistency so far from them has been superb. They've just dropped three points over eight arrows. Turkey Zero was upgraded to a nine, but it's still inconsequential when it comes to shooting against a 38 from Chinese Taipei. You know, there are uh, the Turkish pairing. Don't write them off yet. They look a little bit more relaxed. They've just got to go out there and shoot their very best. Trailing by four, we go into the third set. And Turkey will be shooting first again on target number one. Well, it's not right, like it was in the previous set, but it is a little bit low. Both of them just hanging a little low on that end. There's not really a lot of wind still, but if anything, it has moved to a little bit of a headwind. Another 10 for Tanya Ting. That's in the nine, but they still have a two point advantage at the halfway stage. Yes, I mean, Anagosh really has to put this one in the middle. It was a very quick shot from her. I don't think she had much control over it. So, um, an, an eight is probably pretty generous. Yeah, just on the line by the looks of things. Ete Gajosh with his uh, trademark leaning over style. He puts it in the 10, but uh, well, 16 enough here for the point they require. Tanya Ting, well, she's been putting them in the tens. Yeah. Another one in the ten. So six points to win here to basically draw level on points and share the set points to get to the target of five. Tang Chi Chun going for gold here in Shanghai. And he puts it in the X. It's a brilliant win for Chinese Taipei. They certainly have been on form here and they've taken this one in confident fashion. 6-0 over Turkey. Turkey will have to settle for silver here at the second stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup.
Smiles and thumbs ups all round as confirmation that Chinese Taipei take the recurve mixed team gold here in Shanghai. Well, smiles all around in the crowd. Plenty of the uh, teammates cheering them on. And we will see them on top of the podium fairly soon here in Shanghai. The Liu Jiazhu Park has provided some highly competitive archery here this weekend and Chinese Taipei have lived up to that billing. Turkey throwing out a few loose shots and Chinese Taipei capitalized. A high quality match from them dropping just four points and that high five well deserved yeah. as Tang Chichun lands the final blow for Turkey. Chinese Taipei take the mixed team gold here in Shanghai, China. Well, high fives all round in the beautiful green park in Pudong, surrounded by the skyscrapers. Here's confirmation of the mixed team rankings. Chinese Taipei, top of the pile, beating Turkey there in the final. Korea taking the bronze away from Great Britain who finished fourth. So we've had a couple of stages of uh, the Hyundai Archery World Cup, Medellin a couple of weeks back and Shanghai now for the second one and it's Korea at the top of those rankings with 26 points and hot on their heels. Chinese Taipei taking the gold medal here sitting in second with USA and Turkey just behind. And as I said, it's a unique location here sitting in this park. The mysterious angels looking over us. And coming up very shortly will be the women's recurve finals where the gold medalists will book their place at the World Cup finals in September later this year. First up though, it's time to welcome the teams out for the medal ceremony in the mixed team recurve here in Shanghai. Medals will be presented by Guzhou New Area CDC Publishing Department at Trophies will be presented by Shanghai Archery Association President. Bronze medal representing Republic of Korea. Well, our presentation party have been announced out to the audience here. They'll be presenting the bronze medal to Choi Mi Sun there on the left and Lee Woo Siuk of Korea. Confident in a bronze medal match, having lost out to Turkey in the semi finals, Korea pick up the bronze medal in the mixed team event here on Recurve Sunday. Couple of loose shots from Anagosh and Gazos open the door for Chinese Taipei, but I'm sure when Turkey look back on this, they'll be pleased to have picked up a silver medal in Shanghai. That's Yezimin Anagosh and Mete Gazos. Thank you. Gold medal representing Chinese Taipei. Oh, here they are. They were just too good in the final, dropping just the four points over their 16 arrows. 
Tanya Ting and Tang Chi Chun collecting the gold medal here in Shanghai in the recurve mixed team event. And there we have it. Confirmation, Tanya Ting and Tang Chichun collect gold for Chinese Taipei in the mixed team recurve here in Shanghai. And now it's time for the national anthem of Chinese Taipei. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to our athletes. There we go. The medalists here, Chinese Taipei on top of the podium from Turkey and Korea picking up bronze. This is a pretty unique location but only the top four in each discipline get to shoot here the athletes have been here in fact since Monday and the qualification rounds took place at the Zhang Shen Sports Center here we get a great view looking over this where over 25,000 arrows flew into the targets and Mackenzie uh, a very different location to where we are now for the finals yeah it's within a uh track center which is is really cool and we have plenty of space to be able to shoot qualifications because we have so many athletes here but this is very special here and the crowd are being uh, well blessed with some very high quality archery we've had the mixed teams now the all important individual matches we start with the bronze final here in the women's individual recurve So here we see how the athletes got to uh, this stage. Uh, of course, they've come through qualification and uh, we pick up the brackets in the uh, recurve at the quarterfinal stages. And a losing semi-finalist, Tanya Ting. Well, she's gonna go up against Nur Afisa Abdul Halil of Malaysia. Kang Chai Young, a 6-0 victor in the bottom semi-final. And it's uh, Tomomi Sugimoto who goes into the top end of the final. Tanya Ting losing out 6-2 to her. Well, a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The wind is fairly steady now, but we can see we're surrounded by these skyscrapers. And it does sometimes make for swirly conditions. Let's find out who's gonna take bronze here in the women's individual recurve. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field in the recurve women's bronze medal match. number one, representing Chinese Taipei. So Chinese Taipei going for bronze with Tanya Ting has an average arrow of 
a significant advantage over Nur Afisa Abdul Halil with an 8.42. In fact, all the stats in terms of match win percentages and the tie break win percentages all in favour of the athlete from Chinese Taipei. Abdul Halil, though, has some support in the crowd. She's shooting on target too. As we look down the range, she'll be on the right-hand side. But Mackenzie, you have to say, Tanya Ting is probably the favorite here for this one. I think she has a little bit of, of an advantage just uh, just off of experience. She's She's been here before. She's been on this final stage before. Um, but I don't think we should ever discount someone who made it to the finals. Absolutely not. So here we go. Bronze medal at stake here. Tan Yeting of Chinese Taipei shooting first. Even start here. So three arrows hey! per athlete, not much room for error, and Tanya Ting scores our first 10 of this bronze medal match. Good grouping, and edging towards the 10 for Abdul Halil. So an opportunity here to draw level with a 10 for Abdul Halil, but she needs that 10. And she's dropped that one into a nine. A 27 out of 30, not a bad start. But Tanya Ting of Chinese Taipei takes the first two set points. Early days, Mackenzie, but uh, a 27 out of 30, not bad from uh, the Malaysian athlete. The other thing to, to see is that her grouping was impeccable. Just, I think all of her three arrows, the group size would fit inside the 10 ring. So I think just a few adjustments and she'll be right where she needs to be for this match. But it's this lady here who scored the 28. She takes the set points. She's taking this pretty seriously, as you can imagine, ranking points at stake here for the Malaysian. And we look back at the second arrow from Tanya Ting. Bang, right into the X ring. So trailing. Abdul Halil shoots first into the nine. Just adjusted a bit there, Mackenzie. Yeah, top right this time. Yeah, adjustment to the to the opposite side. It seems like the wind has changed, so I think there's going to be some quick adjustments here uh, from both Tanya Ting and Nura Fiza. Oh, that one's gone high. Tanya Ting scoring an eight on her first arrow, though. And in to the X again on the second arrow. She's using that first as a sighter. Oh, that's gone even further out and up into the six ring. Okay. Just dropping into the nine, but more than enough, and that's six was uh, painful watching for Nur Afisa Abdul Halil. And uh, Tanya Ting talking to her coach there. She dropped into the eight with her first arrow. But like in the first set, the second goes straight into the 10. In fact, into the X, followed by this six. Oh, and that's a big error there for Nur Afisa Abdul Halil of Malaysia. A 40 point difference between the two in the ranking round, a 6.63 for Tanya Ting, ranked her fourth. Nur Afisa Abdul Halil shot a 6.23 in the ranking round and has fought her way to this medal match from number 34 in the seeding list. Well, an eight from Tanya Ting at the start of the second set. 
perhaps suggested that she's fallible, but it was plain sailing through that second set for her. Abdul Halil training will shoot first again in the third set. That's better. Good recovery. Both in the same area of the target, so I'm thinking the wind is pretty calm right now. Good grouping again from the Malaysian. A little adjustment though to her sight. Now, an opportunity for the Malaysian. A nine puts this out of reach. And she's got a nine. 27 points for her will be enough. Tanya Ting can only get 26, but she'll want to put this in the 10. Just above in the nine. So her first points for the Malaysian, and that will give her some comfort. She trails still, but only by two points. Four to two as we go into the final set. Well, the Malaysian started troubly, but uh, there Tanya Ting dropping us into the seven. And what a response here from Nur Afisa Abdul Halil. And uh, it's been a difficult start for the Malaysian. But uh, here's, oh, well, here are all of her arrows, Mackenzie. Again, just kind of uh, grouping one side to the other side. Oh. Had those two high that are, I think, mistake arrows. I don't think that was wind or anything like that. But um, just really solid grouping on either side of the 10 ring. Hopefully yep. she centered it up and, and can shoot some tens ascend. And that's the thing you can really recover even from a bad set, both those high arrows in that second set. Still trailing. Abdul Halil of Malaysia will shoot first in the final set here. The question is, can Tanya Ting find the middle? Oh, a way more confident shot and it hits at the center of the target. That's what you need in these finals matches. Pressure on. And she's dropped that into the eight. You saw the little grimace. The face tells the story often here. Another confident one, and it's on the 9-10 ring. It's marked as a nine, but I fancy that might go to a measure. It may not be important, though. That's better, but the grouping's quite wide. An eight, though, is all that's required from Tanya Ting. Hey! And another 10 to finish it off. The measure inconsequential. She's taken the fourth set, 29 to 26. And even if that nine gets marked up, she has taken it. Tanya Ting here has the medal in the bronze match with Nur Afisa Abdul Halil. She must have been pleased to be here. But in the end, Tanya Ting just too strong. Yeah, really good shooting uh, in this final. I think both athletes are really happy to be in a final right now, um, especially Tanya Ting recovering from a hand injury recently, but um, also uh, the archer from Malaysia just getting a chance to go for a medal. Yeah, fighting her way through from 34th in the rankings, but it, this lady here, she showed she was fallible, dropped uh, a couple of points in the third set but recovered quickly. Smiles all around though from the Malaysian. I think she was happy to shoot here. Absolutely. Felt the pressure a little bit, but then tried to relax off, finished strongly with a nine at the end. But Tanya Ting, too strong overall. As we look back over that match, uh, two tens are the, in the first two sets as the second arrows. And uh, Abdul Halil tried to come back in the third set, got some points with that drop seven. Finished nicely with a nine. Smiles all around for her, but Tanya Ting <laughs> did the job there with a, well, a 10 to finish it off, which was more than enough. High fives for the coach, Tanya Ting.
takes the individual bronze medal here in Shanghai on Recurve Sunday. Coming up now, we got, well, coming up, we've got the gold medal match. So here we have uh, the brackets here, and uh, it's Tomomi Sugimoto who took out Tanya Ting 6-2 in the semi-finals, and Kang Chai Young of Korea going for gold here. Kang claimed gold at the last stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup in Medellin. A confident performance saw her win 6-0 in straight sets against Melanie Gobel of France. And here we see some of those beautiful tens going in. A straight set point win for Kang. And she's going for gold again here in Shanghai. They're waiting in the wings. Sugimoto, of course, got a medal in Medellin. And she's going for gold here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athlete to the field. The girl women's gold medal man. Well, the Japanese athlete on target number one has a, a 9.02 average arrow to Kang's 9.33, but uh, she's a, a danger in a tie-break situation. Kang Chai Young, of course, picked up that gold medal in Medellin a couple of weeks ago, but Sugimoto was on the podium as well. Mackenzie, a tight match coming up. Yeah, these are both uh, two very experienced archers. They've been on these final stages before. I think it's going to be a really tight match. Um, I'm looking forward to a lot of tents this end. Well, this is a really important one. Sugimoto has an opportunity to book her place, an automatic spot with the gold medal here in Shanghai in the World Cup Finals. If Kang takes it, it's back-to-back -back gold, and she'll open up a spot in the rankings for the finals. Sighter of a nine just to the left for the Korean. But what a response from the Japanese archer. Excellent shooting from both. Pulling that one up into the eight. Very different style of draw. Deep breath from Kang Chai Young. So a 10 required from Tomomi Sugamito uh, to draw level on 28 points and share the first set points. She puts it into the eight. So Kang Chai Young goes two set points to zero up in this gold medal match. And Mackenzie, she won in Medellin, so she's booked her place in the finals. Is there an element where she can really shoot a little bit more relaxed than the Japanese athlete? I think she can shoot a little bit more relaxed just because of the final seat, but I don't think that she's going to step off of the gas just for a finals match. Well, we have a look back on that, that first set, and uh, Sugimoto uh, shot first arrow much better than uh, Kang but uh, the spread in the end. What I see in this though is that the wind did pick up on Tsujimoto for the last couple of arrows. So I think uh, maybe she's shooting just a little bit less poundage on the fingers. So she might be a little more affected uh, by that wind. Something to keep in mind for these next few ends. So the range is clear for that second set. Kenzie Brown, the US archer here giving us her expert Analysis. And Sugimoto trailing will shoot first on target one. Back 
back in the yellow, but only a nine. We've seen the Koreans, a bit of a trait, take a first set to get used to conditions and then get better and better. Sigamoto to put the next one in the 10. What can Kang Chai Young do here, though? Edging a flow set to the centre. Down to one arrow in the second set now. A little bit longer of a shot, but still managed to nine. Still really good shooting in a finals match. Kang Chai Young, an opportunity to steal the points though. Yeah. And she's put it into the middle. A 28 plays 27, and Kang Chai won. Sorry, Kang Chai Young has gone four points to zero up. She did this in Medellin a couple of weeks ago. Is she going to do it again? Kang, first two arrows in the nines, getting closer to the ten, and then this one to take it nearly on the X ring, but it was enough. 4-0, perhaps not as confident as Medellin, but still, 4-0 up, same result. Yeah, still, it, it just has to be enough. It doesn't always have to be perfect. It doesn't always have to be 30 every time. Um, I still think the grouping is really good from both archers. There's just going to be a few adjustments here, uh, whether it's from wind or from aiming. But uh, I think we're going to see these land in the middle. Sugimoto here to fight back in the third set. Into the X ring. Boyd by her 4 0 lead. Kang puts it in the middle. And the pressure telling there to Momi Sugimoto, putting it high that time. Pressure can be applied here by the Korean. Sugimoto's really got to put this one in the 10 to give Kang something to think about. It's a 9 and 26 points. 7 to tie and 8 to win. And of course it's a 9 and she did it in Medellin with a 6-0 victory over Melanie Gobel of France. She's done it here in Shanghai at the second stage. A 6-0 win against Tomomi Sugimito and she takes the gold in the women's individual recurve. Well, there we go, confirmation. A 6 0 win for Kang Chai Young. She is the women's individual recurve gold medalist for the second time this season out of two World Cup stages. Well, another superb performance. I'm getting used to you saying, Mackenzie. You only need to beat your opponent by one. Just enough is enough. Yeah, that's how it, the game of sets works. You you shoot shots like this and uh, a 28. It's a back and forth. Just a little bit here yeah. and there and it's just enough. Yeah, it's just enough. And, and a few loose shots uh, there by uh, the Japanese archer really opened the door and in the third set there was a real sign of confidence from a Kang Chai Young and a big hug from her coach. She's going to stand on top of the podium for the second World Cup stage in a row here. You think she's going to the final? She's, de she's <laughs> definitely going to the final. She booked her place in Medellin 
but she confirmed she's potentially a big time contender for the gold medal. So that's the women's competition done in the individual recurve. Kang Chai Young, top of the pile. Tomoe Sugamito gets her second consecutive podium finish. Tan Ya Ting from Chinese Taipei collecting the bronze. Nurafisa Abdul Halil would have been happy to be here on the podium. And uh, after two stages of the Hyundai Archery World Cup, here are the rankings. Kang Chai Young, unsurprisingly, having won both stages, top of the pile with 50 points. But there you see the Japanese archer with two podium finishes in second, and Melanie Gobil, who picked up the silver medal in Medellin, sitting in third. So, oh, that, look at that. I bet that gives you a nasty sting. But the women's is over. Coming up next, it's the men's recurve medal matches. First, though, it's time for the medals for the women's competition here in Shanghai. They're waiting in the wings. Let's welcome them back out onto the field of play. <laughs> Medals will be presented by World Archery Secretary General Tom Dillon. Trophies <laughs> will be presented by Chinese Archery Association Vice President. Wan Fa Jiang Wei, the President Bronze medal representing Chinese Taipei, Tan Ya Ting. Oh, there we go. The crowd celebrating there. Tom Dillon, the Secretary General of World Archery, presenting the bronze medal to well, Tan Ya Ting of Chinese Taipei. Silver medal representing Japan. Second visit to the podium this season in two World Cup stages for Tomomi Sugimito. Didn't quite have enough in the final. Congratulations, you should in Tokyo. But, uh, she collects the silver medal here in the women's individual on recurve Sunday. My medal is from Gold medal representing Republic of Korea. Six nil in Medellin at the first stage in the final against Melanie Gobel. Six nil at the second stage here in Shanghai. Kang Chai Young is the champion again. Here Congratulations in China. A brilliant performance. Perhaps not Ladies quite as confident as the first stage, but in the end, she came out with the same score, and now it's time for the national anthem of Korea. Well, smiles all round there. Kang Chai Young, of course, with the biggest and broadest one. Standing on top there with her second 
gold medal of the season. There's a completely unique location here in Shanghai. As I said, we're surrounded by skyscrapers, which means that we do get this swirly wind, which actually these pictures show up very well. Pretty busy crowd here, and I'll tell you what, with that little draft in the air, it's a little bit more comfortable here than it has been all day. So we look down at the range, 70 meters on recurve Sunday, and now it's time for the bronze medal match in the men's individual recurve. We can see how the athletes got here again. The losing semi-finalists have to go up against each other to go for the bronze medal. It really is a very interesting lineup. Two form archers losing out the semi-finals. Brady Ellison to Lee Ru Suk, Chef Vandenberg to Kim Wu Jin. So Ellison goes up against Vandenberg for bronze here in Shanghai. Well, here they come. Mackenzie, this is going to be a cracker, right? Yeah, I think this is going to be some really tight shooting here from both athletes. I think they're both out here for a little bit of blood. I'm talking number one, representing the United States of America. We look across, I mean, really brilliant stats from both, but Brady Ellison with the greens, which means he's, uh, you know, the favoured athlete in this one on paper. Chef Vandenberg has been shooting really well. Uh, Brady Ellison, of course, has a three nil head to head with him and a slight advantage on the uh, average arrow but I, i'm not sure those stats mean too much right now i think it, it definitely comes down to how you're feeling on on this day on this final field and how you're ready to shoot well hats off to you for being so diplomatic because i'm course, trying of course. i really am <laughs> i know that you're rooting for your teammate and of course you should but i have to say chef Vandenberg has been shooting really well this season and so has this man here on target one brady ellison of the usa up against target two chef Vandenberg from the netherlands who'll shoot first Good sighter from the Dutch athlete. Confident there from Ellison. Opportunity for Ellison to put more pressure on right at the start of this bronze medal match. Right <laughs> all a little left, all in the nines. So a seven to tie, but I uh, fancy Ellison will go for another ten here. I mean, Brady's making it really hard for me not to uh, be excited about this match. He's shooting really well. Uh, clearly not happy with that last arrow, but it's still good enough to be able to uh, to get two set points right now. Well, the first uh, 10, good start. And then this second 10, well, just one a little right, one a little left. And uh, brilliant, brilliant shooting to start with. And uh, look. You look at Chef Van der Berg, three nines. Oh, here we, here we go. When you look at the uh, arrows, all the arrows, Mackenzie, your thoughts? We've got a little bit of a left to right wind, and I think Chef just decided to aim off a little bit more, be a little bit more conservative. And then Brady just went straight at it, and I think that that's the tactic you need to have in this finals because this wind really isn't pushing too hard. 
Well, you can't rule out Chef Vandenberg. He will put that one to one side. Shooting a 27, not bad, but trailing by two set points will start the second set. So he's dropped that one into the eight. Ellison will spot an opportunity here on the nine ten ring. Will get marked to ten here. A little bit longer timing from Brady. I imagine that he's going to speed up in this next uh, arrow and then the following one as well. Well, into the ten for Chef Vandenberg. He's having a little adjustment to his sight. Another ten. Another slightly long hold, though, would you say? Uh, that one was probably a little bit quicker than the first arrow, so... I think it's just how comfortable you feel with holding that. If you feel that pressure on yourself, that you're shooting a long shot. It's usually not as centered as you'd like. Well, another opportunity for Ellison. Yep. And another opportunity taken. What a brilliant start from the American. A 29 in the first set, a perfect 30 in the second, and he's already 4 0 up. In uh, one of Brady's preliminary matches, he shot a straight 90 arrows for a 6 0 win. And uh, I think that's what he was looking for in this finals match. Um, but that that third arrow just got away from him. But these awesome tens right here, just ideal. Yeah, and you can see that this, the whilst the hold was a little long on the first one, the form and the process is identical time and time again. And that's what's making him so dangerous this season. Ellison with a 4-0 lead up against Dutch archer Chef Vandenberg. As I've said before, I don't think it's it's at all wise to discount anyone in a finals match. Vandenberg starts yes, set 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 with a ten. This set is the one where Chef really needs to push back on Brady to get any set points in this finals. Well, all Ellison has to do is match Vandenberg. Vandenberg has the advantage of being able to apply the pressure because he's shooting first. But if you leave a door open for Ellison, more often than not this season, he's not marched through it, he's stormed through it. There we go. Just amazing shooting. He is definitely on fire right now. Vandenberg has to put this in the 10 for me. So another nine and a massive opportunity here for Brady Ellison, a nine to take a six nil victory. And another perfect 30 out of 30 for Brady Ellison. What an impressive performance from him. A 27 in the first set from Chef Vandenberg, not a bad score, but he didn't improve from there in the second, marking up to a 28 in the third, but 29, 30 and 30 for Brady Ellison gives him all six set points and a three set victory for the Inform American. He's taken bronze here in Shanghai in the men's individual recurve. Eighty-nine is not bad out of ninety. But I wonder if the coach is saying to him, you know, we need to fix that nine that you shot the third <laughs> arrow. But that's how good he is at the moment. That's how well he's shooting. That he, as you said, he would have been disappointed with that nine. Yeah, I think he was disappointed on that nine. That was a, a little bit slower shot from him, and you could tell just by his face, he was like, oh, I didn't really like that one. I think he was out there for. A straight 90, but you know, 89 will do it. Well, nine arrows from Ellison, the first two tens. And I mean, it's just 10 after 10 after 10. There's only one nine in that group of uh, 
nine shots as we get a brilliant view of the arrow disappearing down the 70 meter range and three tens to finish off the job and the trademark I, I don't know what to call that it's a it's a sort of a, a downward we, punch we call it a roar a roar yeah because he he gets that real loud uh outburst but then that that fist pump with it well there you go the ellison roar a 6-0 victory to take bronze here in Shanghai. Coming up now, it's time for gold in the men's individual recurve on this 70 meter range here in the central business district of Shanghai's Pudong area. We've had a great session here and what a great finale. Two of the world's very best archers and two Koreans. Lee Woo Suk coming through Brady Ellison 6-4 in the top semi-final. Kim Woo Jin a 7-1 victor over Chef Vandenberg. It's two Koreans up against each other for gold here in Shanghai. These two know each other so well, of course. Not only are they teammates, but they faced each other twice last season. Lee won in Antalya, but uh, Kim took the all-important World Cup final title in Samson, and here he is on his way to that World Cup final. And here they are in Shanghai, going up against each other for gold. waiting in the wings they're ready to go and I can't wait for this one Mackenzie I think it'll be pretty close well the glasses on the right a bit of a trademark well he lifted them up just as I said it and we see the head-to-heads here Kim Woo Jin a 9.48 average arrow to a 9.43 from Lee Wu Siuk, who, as usual, salutes the crowd. Head to head, two apiece. And the average arrow in the two matches actually goes to Lee Wu Siuk. He sandwiched two wins against his uh, compatriot with two losses. All to play for here. Lots of Koreans in the crowd. Uh, they'll be polite and clap away, but I think everyone is about to be wowed by uh, the level of archery from these two Koreans. Lee Woo Suk is going to shoot first and start us off. This for gold. Wow, that is not the start I expected from Kim Woo Jin. And the, the crowd was shocked as well. A little bit of uh, Bo Kwando there from Lee. Well, correcting there, still a bit high, but a uh, massive opportunity for Lee Woo Suk to take uh, perhaps a lead that would surprise him this easily and uh, that's done and out of reach by a long way for Lee Wu Shuk. he's going to take the first two set points here well finishing with a strong 10 but uh, four points the difference in the first set of course the scoreboard gets wiped clean for the beginning of the second set but two set points to zero and I think it's the ease with which Lee Wu Suk took that one that was the surprise yeah I think Kim Woo Jin was just trying to figure out this field figure out the wind maybe just a little bit it has the windsock has shifted to go the opposite direction so uh, I think he's just figuring it out and found a 10 on his last 10 
Yeah, well, that start, a seven, is uh, not great. And then the 10 to finish off confident from Lee Wu Suk. Yeah, really good shooting, 29 out of 30. Um, I think Kim Woo Jin might push him back a little bit. He's got to put that first set out of his mind. Perhaps affected by the conditions. Kim Woo Jin has to settle his nerve. Well, this time it's Lee Wu Shuk who pulls one out into the eight. Good grouping there from Kim Woo Jin. See those target flags uh, waving a little bit more than what you're used to seeing today. Uh, affecting Kim Woo Jin just a little bit, but I think uh, he's got a little bit better handle on it than Lee Woo Sik does. Well, and he's put this one out of reach as well. 28 is more than Lee Wu Suk can score and in fact ends up with a 26 and we're all square after two sets and yes the wind has certainly picked up. Lee Wu Suk of course was going for gold in uh, Medellin losing out to Brady Ellison there at the first stage of the High and Dai Archery World Cup and Kim Wu Jin picked up the bronze medal in Medellin going for gold for the first time this season and here is the 10 he shot a recovery from that first set for him straight away. Kim Woo Jin is uh, a man well known on the circuit and uh, he did find his composure immediately at the start of the second set and is back on level terms with his teammate. We knew this one was going to be tight. I'm not quite sure we expected this though. Yeah, I don't think we expected eights in the finals, but I think it's made for some interesting archery. And uh, it just goes to show how set play is so interesting to watch. All level, Lee Wu Shuk to shoot first in set three of this gold medal match. Pulling left again. And inside the X ring there. A bit of pressure on Lee Wu Suk now. He hits the X ring. Very calm, but they're all square. So this set is going to come down to the final arrow from each of the archers. Into the 10. I think that hit the other arrow as well. Ten required to share the set points. And it's dropped into the nine there. So Lee Wu Shuk takes the third set. It's kind of like they're on a seesaw. They just go back and forth and back and forth. Well, Park Jae soon talking to him there. We look back at uh, the two tens right on the X ring. And then this third arrow, I think, hits the second arrow, but into the ten. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Park Chesun is quite delicate and quiet when they're uh, in the break and uh, the agents are collecting the arrows from the previous set. But uh, you can definitely hear him when uh, there's action on the field of play. I think it, it kind of shows that he's he cares about the athletes that he's talking to. He wants to hear what they have to say and then give them the information that they need and then the encouragement that they need while they're staying up on the line just on cue there and of course Kim Woo Jin shooting first here has the other Korean coach in his camp opportunity already for Lee Woo Suk 
see the wind. Lustring his t-shirt into the 10. Opportunity here for Lee Wu Shuk. Kim Woo Jin knows this. He puts it into the X-ring. But still advantage Lee Wu Shuk. Two tens from him and he's got the gold in Shanghai. That's one. Pressure switching over to target two and Kim Woo Jin. He needs a ten I fancy here. And he pulls it into the eight under pressure. A seven will draw things level. An eight will win it for Lee Wu Shuk. Oh, and he's done just what he needed. An eight was all he required. An eight is what he scored. And Lee Wu Shuk has beaten his teammate Kim Wu Jin in the final here in Shanghai on Recurve Sunday. He is the champion. Oh, but what a match and not what we expected. Lee Wu Shuk takes the second stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup individual men's recurve. Six points to two over Kim Wu Jin. I just, uh, Mackenzie, I mean, I, I, my mind is blown. We were expecting 10, 10, 10, and just over and over again, especially after seeing what we saw uh, in previous matches today where the quality's been so high. What happened here? Uh, I have no clue. I think the wind picked up just a little bit, but uh, I feel like I can just hear it that Brady would really wish he was in this gold medal match to be honest but uh really awesome shooting from both athletes but uh i think the wind got just a little bit better of them than what they are used to oh. and hope to shoot well we look back on a, a, an interesting match uh i think everyone here was quite surprised this uh first shot from kim Wu jin set the tone and i think it made both athletes a little nervous uh, they were shooting lots of tens, but it was just the one or two very odd stray arrows. Not what we're used to from these two Koreans, but made for a very, very entertaining match. The eight there was the last arrow from Kim Woo Jin, and an eight from Lee Woo Shuk was all he needed. And the smile from both of them as they hug and shake hands. Lee Woo Shuk books his place in the finals, of course, with that win. Uh, but what? An entertaining match it was. Kim Woo Jin picking up his second consecutive medal. Bronze in Medellin, silver here. What next for Kim Woo Jin? So confirmation of the rankings are here in Shanghai. Li Wu Shuk top of the pile beating Kim Wu Jin, his compatriot to the silver medal, to the bronze medal. Kim to, of course taking the silver. Brady Ellison, well he was very very strong dropping just one point in the bronze medal match over Chef Vandenberg who finished, finished fourth here. Two stages of course done, Medellin and Shanghai. And how has that affected the World Cup rankings? Well, let's take a look. Top there, the stage winner here in Shanghai, Lee Wu Shuk. Brady Ellison, he's one of the four athletes at the moment. He won in Shanghai. He picked up another medal here. Uh, sorry, he won in Medellin and picked up another medal here in Shanghai. He's sitting second. But Kim Woo Jin and Chef Vandenberg, I don't think their story's been told completely so far this season. Uh, the four of them really are the form athletes in the men's recurve discipline. Well, it really has been beautiful as the mysterious angels look down over us with the beautiful towers uh, of the skyscrapers around the Pudong Park here. Uh, it's time now, though, for the medal celebrations in the men's individual recurve. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, victory ceremony for the recurrent band. Medal 
Awards will be presented by Chinese Art Trade Association Vice President、颁发奖牌的是国家体育总局射击射箭运动管理中心主任、中国射箭协会副主席郑立军。Trophies will be presented by Fuzhou New Area Culture, Sports and Tourism Central Director. 颁发奖杯的是上海市浦东新区区委宣传部副部长、上海市浦东新区文化局和旅游局局长王伟。获得铜牌的是来自美国的选手 ，Bronze Medal representing United States of America, Brady Addison. Well, Brady Ellison was the man in form in Medellin at the first stage of the Honda Archery World Cup. He's shown that he's still in form, collecting the bronze here in Shanghai. I I I I I I I I I I I Medellin, a silver here in Shanghai. In uh, well, I think a、uh, final that we talked about for some time. But he's on the podium again, Kim Woo Jin. And he lost out in the final to his teammate. He just needed an eight to win, and that's what he scored. The champion of Shanghai, and a man who's just put his place in the World Cup finals in September, Lee. Shook of Korea. Thank you. There is confirmation of our gold medalist Lee Wu Shook. For the next anthem of the Republic of Korea, it will be time to hear the national anthem of the Republic of Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to our athletes. Well, there we have it. Li Wu Shuk taking the gold here in Shanghai in an interesting、uh, gold medal match against his teammate Kim Wu Jin, Brady Ellison of the USA, with. The bronze medal, Mackenzie. It's been a great、uh, competition here in Shanghai. Yeah, just lots of really good shooting from all these athletes. Just amazing archery. Yeah, really good stuff. And and your highlight,、uh, apart from spending time in the commentary box with me, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I think we had quite a few upsets、uh, throughout the day, but、uh, just I I'm always going to cheer for my teammates. So I think、uh, Brady would probably be the highlight. But that match in the final between、uh, Li Wu Shuk and Kim Wu Jin, really nothing that anyone expected, I don't think. Not expected, but very good match, I think. Yeah, great match, and, and you said there were the wind conditions, which had been blustery, but really hadn't affected people too much so far here. I think that was the one match that it really might have affected some athletes, and you could see that evident with a seven and an eight, unlike. The Korean archers, like we're used to seeing. Well, the mysterious angels there, looking over on the crowd、uh, and giving us a, a brilliant uh, conclusion uh, to the action here in Shanghai. Of course, that's it from Shanghai. But coming up in just two weeks' time, we move on to Antalya and、uh, the beach in Turkey for stage three of the Hyundai Archery World Cup.
And uh, I mean, this is a very unique location here with uh, the terrapins and the koi carp in the pond uh, that uh, sits between the shooting line and the target here in Pudong. And those skyscrapers, we said, make swirly wind, haven't affected the athletes until that very last match. Yeah, it's a really nice, calm little park in the middle of uh, central Shanghai. It's a beautiful place, the Liu Jiazhu Park. And, uh, oh, he looks like he's having fun there. He's enjoyed the archery. He's going to have to wait uh, till next year when hopefully we'll be back here. And, of course, the wind just drops down uh, just in time for the Longines Precision Award here in Shanghai. The Longjin Prestige Prize is now to present to our champion, the Longjin China Marketing Director, Kit Tsai. The winner of the Recur Women Brazilian Prize for the Hyundai Archery World Cup, Shanghai State, representing Republic of Korea, Chun Ming Sung. Well, it's Choi Mi Sun who, of Korea who picks up the Longines Prize for Precision. And what a prize it is as well. Beautiful long jeans watch. Well, there we go. That's the final award here in Shanghai. Mackenzie Brown of the USA, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's been a, a great pleasure to be here. And here we have a summary of uh, our medalists here. Brady Ellison picking up the bronze in the men's. Li Wu Shuk taking gold. It's Tanya Ting with the bronze in the women's. And Kang Chai Young of Korea taking the gold medal for the second time this season. So two stages so far. And the Women's World Cup rankings look like that. Kang Chai Young winning both of the first two stages. So she opens up a slot in the world rankings, which will please some of the athletes a little bit lower down the line. Two different winners across the two stages. The men's competition and the World Cup rankings look a little bit like this with the top four, really the form uh, archers out there. Lee Wu Shuk, top of the pile from Brady Ellison, Kim Woo Jin of Korea, and Chef Vandenberg of the Netherlands in fourth place. So that's two stages done, Medellin and Shanghai. Next up, we move to the coast of Turkey. And there we go, 25th and 26th of May for the finals of Antalya. And what a beautiful location that is to move to in just two weeks time. Well, that's it here from Shanghai. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage. It's just two weeks to go until, two, uh, until Antalya and stage three. Thank you so much for joining us here in Shanghai.